Hi everyone and welcome to another Game Art video. In this video we will start looking at water and how to create various different water effects. This video was inspired by a video I saw the other day by Michael Ashworth where he broke down how Nintendo created their water effects inside Super Mario Galaxy 2 using displacement maps. However I'm going to show you actually how to create these in Unreal Engine 4. If you want to watch that video, uh, check out the description below for a link to that video. I um, highly recommend it, it's a well, very well made video. Um, so thank you for Michael for producing that. So without further ado, let's talk about how this actually works in Unreal. So here you can see I have put that effect into action. And we've got a nice cheap water effect. Okay, That's the main thing about this water effect, it is cheap. Um, it's not going to be really uh, expensive for your uh, shaders. It's quite simple and quite easy to actually pull off. So let's get started. I'm going to go to add new and create a new material. And this is going to be called water underscore map. And in here, we need to put in a simple texture. So I went to Google and just found a uh, simple tileable water texture. So you can do the same if you like. And there we have one. Okay. So main thing is it needs to be tileable because we're panning it. So it needs to be able to repeat, no problem. And we can plug that directly into base color. Now, where it's based in, uh, plugged straight into there, you can see that it is um, put it to plain. You'll see that it is static. Okay. So as I said, the trick is to make this pan. So to make it pan, we use a panner. And we can plug that into our UVs. UVs basically are the coordinates of the texture, so we can control where they are placed. This is super important because that's what we're mostly controlling when we're dealing with this. So the panner, I've got some settings over here. I can change the X value to be 0.1 and the Y value to be 0.1. And you'll see it go ahead and starts moving when it starts. There you go. Okay. But obviously this is only part of the effect. The rest of it is using something called a displacement map. And what a displacement map basically does, it tells it to move only certain parts of this image, not all of it. And what that makes, it gives the illusion of, of this sort of broken look, where it looks more with, like ripples. So with it all panning, we now need to tell it to only pan a certain part of it. And that's going to be using that displacement map mentioned in Michael's videos. So we can go into texture. You can do texture sample. And add a noise to this sample. And that will do. And the way it works is that we're going to basically lerp between these two. And lerp basically means linear interpolate. So we go lerp and you'll look for linear interpolate. And that will go into the UV. And we want to take just the R and the G value from this. So we can do a mask. And go component mask. R and G is really ticked on into B there and leave it as is. So now you'll see you get this weird effect happening. Okay, so the, this material underneath, this texture here is panning underneath this. And the only parts that are being affected are sort of half and half between the black and the whites in this. You get this weird rippling effect. Okay, so we're getting kind of there. So you can kind of see how it's working. Okay. Without the panel, you can see where it just stands still. And that's because it's distorting this image underneath it. So it just looks like a really big distortion. So let's plug that lerp back in, uh, panel back into lerp. So that's kind of there, but we need to uh, tweak it a little bit because it's a bit much. There's a quite a lot going on there. We want to make sure it's not too distorted. We still want to be able to see this detailing underneath it. So for that, we need to use three point levels. And I plug that into there. So the three point levels <clears throat> are uh, basically we can tweak its shadows, highlights, and midtones. So rather than using zero for black, we'll use something else for uh, for black instead. So here I'm going to put in, hold down the one key and put left click, and you can insert a new constant. And we need one for each of the new black, new middle, and new white. And I'm going to put in for the black 0.4, for the middle 0.5, and for the whites 0.6. 
So basically, it sort of scrunches it down so it doesn't have too too much white and too much black. Okay. So we got now you can actually still see that same detailing that we wanted to see earlier, but the the rippling effect is far less pronounced. So the next thing we want to do is tell this ripple, basically these are the ripples, tell these ripples, this distortion, to also pan. So we can get another panner. Plug it into my UVs. And I'm going to give it the opposite direction. So minus 0 0.1. Minus 0 0.1. Oh. There you go. And wait for it to render up. Okay, so a bit more effects going on there. Next, I'm going to also scale up my texture coordinate. So I'm going to get my texture coordinate node. And I'll scale this up as well. So let's uh, multiply by 1.2, let's say. And plug that into the coordinate panel. And that will scale up my image. Or my distortion anyway. And there we have it. Pretty simple. Next thing we want to do is just put on some emissive stuff. So we're going to change this to a translucent material. And we're going to give it a simple opacity of say 0 0.5. See how that looks. Yeah, and there you go. So what we're doing here is using a displacement technique to displace a texture based on a noise mask. Okay, and this noise mask is what we call the displacement map. So there are two ways of doing this. There's two things that are often confused because they're both called displacement. This is a textual displacement technique rather than an actual displacement map. Um, but this is how you accomplish that same effect. The main thing if you want to do displacement stuff without water, is using this and masking it into a lerp with the panner. And then it will be a lot, um, uh, it'll just then it will displace whatever you want it to displace. Okay. Let's click apply. And let's add this to our world. So let's just get a plane in there. And I'm going to scale this up. And let's drag my water map, the one we just made, as its material. And you can see that it's massive, okay, it's because we scaled up the mesh. If we wanted to, the material to work with the object scale, we can actually achieve that. To make an uh, material scale to its object, we need to add a custom UV to this. So select your main material, scroll right down, and you'll see somewhere around here. Do -do. I just search for it. Just type in UV in the search box, and you see number of custom UVs, change it to one, and you'll see a custom UV pin appear on your material. And in here, we can get the texture coordinates. And we're going to multiply this by the object scale. So the object scale is simply a node. And we just want the X and Y because we're working in just UVs, so X and Y for that. So we're going to go append vector X and Y into the multiply. So now it will stretch across the whole thing and tile itself across the whole thing. Okay, so a couple of things I want to fix in here. Um, the coordinate of this, you can see, isn't the whole image. It's using just a part of it, okay? So we need to tell this to use the whole image. So what I'm going to do here, we need to put in a texture coordinate into this um, water. So let's add a texture coordinate into here. And we're going to 
Um, what should we do? We'll add this to the mask and see how that looks. Okay, so you can see that through the whole image now. Yeah. And if you want to make the ripples a bit bigger, you can do. You can take out from the mask here and just multiply this. Before you plug it into the texture coordinate, you multiply it and that'll scale it up. In case I'm going to do 1.2. And that make the ripples a little bit bigger. And there we go. And there's our water. In fact, while we're here, let's just tweak up that opacity there to 0 0.6. Make a bit more. See through. <clears throat> And there we have it, the final bit of water. And to show you that scaling working back in the world, you can see as we've scaled it, it's duplicated the water and tiled it appropriately. And there we have simple rippled water. So let's walk through how this actually works uh, once more before we sign off. So there are two parts. First of all, we're getting the water and panning it. So here's the panner panning the water here. Now, lerp basically means it's going to be go halfway between panning the water and doing this thing instead. Okay, which is keeping it static. So this part will keep some parts of it static, and those parts will be those that are white. So here I'm getting my uh, displacement. I'm also panning this, and I'm telling its texture coordinates to be 1.2 size bigger. So I've told it to scale that uh, displacement map up. I'm then clamping those values, the white and black values, to be 0 0.5 and 0 0.6 with a median of 0 0.5. This gives me a softer blacks and a softer whites, making it less harsh. If you want to tweak these values, you can do to make the ripples more pronounced. That's down to you. Next, I'm taking just the UV coordinates from that, so just the, the flat UV coordinates, scaling those up again by 1.2. And adding them to the texture coordinates of what's going to be our water. Because the textural coordinates are now plugged into this, this will give us accurate details of our water tune. If we didn't have that, then it's going to use the texture coordinates of our displacement map, which is too big. So we're just going to add that to our texture coordinates, just scale it up, and move them and offset them. The add offsets. The texture coordinate moves it and shifts it along based on the displacement map. And that's it. Got the opacity and you've got your object scale being put into the custom UV. And, and here's the finished product. Thanks very much for watching. Hopefully you've learned a lot from this video. Um, we're going to do a lot more on water and different water effects. As you can see here, we haven't put in refraction or edge, uh, depth fades or anything like that, but we'll do those in a separate video and explain what's going on there. Thanks very much for your support. Please leave a comment below if you have any questions or requests. And if you want to see other videos nice and early before anyone else, um, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley and donate just a dollar to get access to all those videos before anyone. Thanks again to everyone who supported me thus far. Um, thank you. Massively to those who are donating at the top tier. I wouldn't be doing this without you guys. So, um, hooray for you. Thank you very much. And um, I'll see you all guys next time. Bye-bye.